Hello, this is David Mandel again, and I forgot a couple things in my, the last video I made, the video on notes on computer ethics, so I wanted to add a couple more notes. Hopefully I can keep this a little bit short. First, I'm not wearing a tie. I forgot to wear a tie in the last video, and I don't feel like remaking the video because I forgot my tie. I do usually wear a tie when I make videos. Don't always wear very nice pants. I sometimes have my uh, farm boots on, but I wear a tie because I think it looks more professional. I think it's important to present oneself with a, a professional image if you're in the computing field, and I recommend that you as students learn to present yourself with a professional image. We really want to know the technology. We want to know what we are doing. I, image is no substitute for substance. However, when you're selling yourself, when you're in a marketing mode, which all of us are all of the time, image is important. There will be a lot of people trying to sell themselves who have nothing but image, who don't have a clue what they're doing, I suppose, but really do a good job of presenting themselves and making a case for themselves. Early in my life, I learned that if you did know what you were doing or if you whatever. You still had to make a case for yourself. You have to present yourself with good image. That's why I do tend to wear a tie when I make videos. I don't like a tie. I've always thought about going away from it. I've thought about maybe wearing um, a batik shirt, which you can wear with an open collar, which is perfectly formal wear in um, Southeast Asia. <laughs> um, or a um, um, a mud uh, what mud fabric shirt like they'd wear in um, West Africa, but uh, but I'm afraid those wouldn't be recognized. Maybe a narrow narrow jacket. Uh, anyway, um, I also noticed in the last video I kept saying law. I was I thought I was saying law. But I was pronouncing it lie in many cases, or my my the last W was not pronounced very well. Um, I'm sorry, my pronunciation is not always very good or very uh, um, very pronounced. So uh, forgive me. Okay. And the other thing is I said a lot of bad things about the um, bill, the law in Oregon against um, um, that requires computer technicians to turn in people that they may have reason to suspect of child pornography. I was basing my criticism very much on the law as it was proposed two years ago in the state legislature, maybe more than two years ago in the state legislature. I thought it was very badly worded. It was very vague and it had a lot of flaws. Once again, I'm not criticizing the intention. I'm criticizing the implementation. I have since done a little reading on that law, and I think it was, I, I, I can't find a lot of details, but I, I am under the impression that it was actually improved quite a lot in committee uh, prior to passing it and may not be nearly as draconian as I thought it was. Um, how, in any case, it is a law that you should read about if you ever become a computer technician because it could affect you. Um, also, as I understand, unlike the early version of the law, the law as it's actually passed only requires this of people being paid as a computer technician or doing a acting as a computer technician on a professional basis. The original version would have covered people who were 
aiding uh, volunteers for a nonprofit that were aiding people in computer with computer stuff, and I. Um, and there was, and the, I believe there still are some um, doubts to how much suspicion constitutes legal um, suspicion. Um, and um, so certainly while that applied to people who were not even making money as computer technicians, I opposed it. Uh, as I say, the actual law may be much better than I understood the proposed law to be. Um, the Another thing I wanted to make clear is when I talked about the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, I criticized it a little bit. I still criticize it, but I wasn't, I am not sure I was clear in that it's my feeling that there are a lot of cultural differences between people in the world. Some people think differently and than other people um, across cultures. And um, for example, when it comes to software piracy, um, the Chinese are always accused of being guilty of software piracy. In many ways they are. but or music piracy or whatever. I lived in the Far East and, you know, I saw this. <laughs> um, I saw, you know, stores that you could walk into. They'd have racks of, uh, at that time, vinyl albums. You'd choose your vinyl albums, choose songs off your vinyl albums, uh, order those to be copied onto a a cassette tape or a DVD, and you'd go back the next day and you'd have your own personalized uh, uh, cassette tape or DVD, which is probably, you know, which is really not legal according to American copyright laws. There, it was kind of an accepted practice. The reason is because they did not accept the American or the, uh, the European um, ethics of intellectual property rights. They have a different ethical standard for intellectual property rights, uh, a little more like open source people in some ways. <laughs> they think property, they think intellectual activity should be open, should be free. Um, it, it, I, one can argue their case that on, on philosophical grounds that you know, that it's every bit as worthy as some of the uh, things that we do here when it comes to intellectual property, but it's distinctly different. And one of the things that bothers me about the Corrupt Foreign, um, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, although in that case it's about bribery and corruption, but one of the things that bothers me is it just is trying to um, uh, oh, what? dictate American ethical standards to the w entire world. Now, I agree with American ethical standards in most cases. I am I'm, I am American. I tend to agree with our standards, but I, I don't believe in all cases we should just dictate it to the rest of the world. Yes, if part of the world is doing human sacrifice, m maybe we should dictate it to the rest of the world. I do have a problem with the institution of slavery, um, even though it is somewhat a, a little bit accepted in certain parts of the world yet, although mostly not in its worst form. Um, but there are other ways. Um, it's short-sighted to go in and dictate Americanism every place. Um, sometimes you can achieve it by other methods. <laughs> um, the 
other thing I wanted to talk about, and the reason I actually started this video is I did want to talk about the role of minorities and women in uh, computing and computing uh, areas. Be and I wanted to do that. The book didn't talk about it. it it's kind of like not part of computing. It's just part of being ethical. <laughs> But it tends to be a real problem in computing over the years. You know, it seems like there's a lot of computer people talk down to women um, or do not accept them as equals in the field where, you know, in the open source community, we have some fine women hackers. Uh, we have, um, their numbers are not large, not nearly as large as men's. Actually, they're kind of large, but as a percentage, they're not, they're, they're small. But we have some fine hackers, people like Allison Randall, um, Karen, uh, is it Saunders? I'm sorry, she's a good friend. So I, I spaced out here. Um, my wife, um, Nancy Mandel. Um, Many, many fine Unix systems administrators. Um, I'm thinking of one in particular at the moment. A, a, a database administrator I'm thinking of that works in the Coos Bay area, unless she's retired now. Um, there are, you know, and we need to, but still sometimes there are people in the computer field that don't treat women as equals and take a, you know, and it's hard to deal. It's just hard to be in a business where you're not treated as equals. This doesn't apply only to women. It sometimes applies to people of different nationalities or races or whatever. Um, and it's equally true there that uh, indeed, at times, <laughs> At times, I found it where <laughs> in different parts of the world, it's different. Uh, there was once I, my wife and I were kind of turned down for a job in uh, Sarawak um, because we were white. And uh, that, it was by good friends, but they really didn't want to give the people in Sarawak the impression that they were going to send second-rate people or temporary people to do an important job. So the job went to one of our colleagues who actually really didn't want to go to Sarawak. <laughs> um, we did. But, and uh, all, all of us were probably equally well qualified for the position. Um, uh, by contrast, <laughs> had that been in America, <laughs> maybe the white guy would have gotten the, the, the preference. So, you know, I'm just saying, don't let your don't let stereotypes rule um, reasonable decisions. <laughs> um, make decisions on the basis of um, who will do the best job, and uh, and and try to treat everybody fairly. Uh, and uh, I, I really think that's important. I, I also really think that the people who tend to be, to discriminate the most, who talk down to women or down to this group or down to that group, tend to be people who are maybe less talented because people who are fairly well regarded and talented in the field are self-confident enough that they feel they can compete with anybody as their equals. It just doesn't matter. Um, um, these extraneous things just don't matter to them. People who are maybe second rate in their field um, will bring up all these extraneous things of, well, that's just a woman or that's, you know, those people, well, their culture never really produced much of anything um, um, in the last 10,000 years. Um, 
or, or something of that type. And if you need to bring up extraneous things, which often aren't even true in the first place, but if you need to bring up extraneous things, usually that's because you're uncertain of your own position. If you're uncertain of your own position and you want to bring up extraneous things, remember there's people like me who think that if you're bringing up extraneous things and discriminating against people, you must be second rate. And why should I hire somebody second rate? So it can actually come back to hurt you because there are people who, well, I mean, I, I think I truly think people who do such things are often not as well qualified as as um, as people who do not discriminate. So, um, so it behooves you uh, not just for fairness and for ethics and for altruistic reasons not to discriminate. It's also a, ma a matter of. Um, impressing people who may be hiring people. <laughs> so anyway, that that said, um, that's everything I want to say. Bye-bye. Mm,